All right, hello, OAS family. It is time for another book review, and today we are going to be reviewing uh, Landscape Painting, Ink and Color by Chen Chen Yu. And uh, this is, uh, before we get into the body of the book, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the specifics. The book is 10 and a quarter inches tall by seven and a half inches wide. And uh, it has 200 and 208 pages uh, with text um, in Chinese. So uh, as the title of the book suggests, uh, it is a book that is uh, completely about landscape painting. So we're gonna go through the introduction here, coming into this. And uh, this section text-wise is kind of on the idea of uh, Chinese landscape painting and uh, the text um, defines some terminal, a lot of terminology that's used. And we have a couple sort of older um, ink paintings here depicting different um, styles of ink work and dots used in uh, the landscape painting. Again, more varied pieces here. Uh, and the author goes into a little bit um, more detail on uh, some of the different rendering techniques uh, and looks to define uh, the terms uh, that will be used later in the book. So lots of um, small examples of paintings here in this page, uh, along with some uh, uh, real life photos. Uh, this chart is I think unique to this book and is really uh, very inter uh, in very interesting. So we have um, on page page 16, we have a bunch of real photos of leaves. Uh, and then we have uh, the renderings of those leaves um, in sort of a brush painting style on the right hand side. So this is a really great exercise um, in showing the way that a Chinese painter um, would choose to render something that is uh, that he's seeing ob uh, observationally in real life. Um, in the end, I think that is kind of one of the essential differences um, when you're looking at uh, studying painting from different points of view. We have sort of the Western point of view and then the Eastern point of view. So having like this common reference photo alongside with uh, the, the chosen rendering is uh, I think is really uh, illuminating. So now here we're on uh, this page uh, and we have a couple uh, ink landscapes, one in this close up here of this rock structure and then this river scene over here on the right. So here we're on page uh, 20 and 21. Um, and we have a very abstract uh, painting down here where we can see kind of the suggestion of some type of ting or temple or structure. Uh, and then um, a lot of uh, uh, abstract ideas in the background here. I think really effective. Um, for those who like uh, abstract painting, this is a really nice one to look at because you really do get a feeling of intention with the composition, but you can see that things are left quite um, general and open to interpretation as far as uh, being abstract. And then we have sort of this older style, uh, more detailed ink painting above. Really interesting here with a very strong use of the mineral blue and cloud, ideas of clouds. This uh, rendering style became very popular in Japanese uh, painting, this way of rendering the water, uh, and particularly like the waves uh, of the ocean. Now we have like a couple pages full of uh, different styles of uh, painting. Here we have this thing with the bamboo in the foreground that sort of uh, 
chops up the view of a structure in the background that's quite interesting. Um, we have this painting here that looks uh, kind of very Western in style to me. Uh, and then this ink uh, sketch. Um, and then this painting here with the abstract birds in the distance and the trees in the foreground. And this, a very interesting uh, structure of this sort of almost like cove. It's really exaggerated, circular uh, landmass with this, uh, it's like water that's coming in in the middle. Discussion here on materials, brushes, ink, colors. You can see the chip colors here. And then different types of uh, watercolors, different ways of uh, interpreting, uh, uh, integrating color. We have these two watercolors, these flat palette systems, um, different colored sticks. And then accessories, and here's a picture all together of, of these. So here on 38 and 39, we have again, once again, this real life photograph of, uh, of a water and mountain scene, and then uh, set against different styles of painting. And then here we're focusing on rocks. And this is our first sort of sequential um, diagram where you get uh, them building this uh, rock element from the simple line drawing into this sort of shading idea and then eventually into the color uh, here. So really useful uh, figure right there. And again, uh, simpler steps, but again, the same idea of rendering this sort of rock face uh, and then also showing this idea of similarly, um, a, a photograph of like similar rock structures in real life and how they may be rendered or uh, how different artists have chosen to render them in painting. Again, we have this Again, this figure of painting and real life scenery that show, you know, potential inspiration. And then uh, this really beautiful rock structure done in three steps here. Building this mountain element uh, from, again, the line drawing into um, these more fill strokes that seem to apply, imply the trees on the mountainside. Different style here, more focused on line work. Um, uh, and you can see it built up in three stages. And once again, we have another, the, the, this part of the book is really, really helpful as it shows sort of like these real life pictures and then example renderings of the things that are in the pictures. Yeah, lots of, lots of sections like this. Um, this is where the book is, at least instructionally, is kind of starting to shine. That is lovely, the textures that are in here, in this rock formation here. All right, so on page 58, we have this new section and I have my mom here off to the side and uh, since she, her language skill, uh, as far as reading on the fly, is much stronger than mine. I brought her in to talk a little bit about the text when it was noteworthy. Um, this book, the great thing compared difference from other book is that they would uh, show a, actually photograph or scenery, and then they would show a, a, a painting uh, inspired by the scenery. Uh, it's very wordy uh, in Chinese, 
And for me, who read complete Chinese, I kind of uh, get lost a little bit on um, the, the author writing between terminology and history. So um, if you already have a little bit uh, landscape background, I think this is a book that if you go through the pages, which has illustration, and um, it does help you a lot to follow the artist that has a pretty detailed illustration on um, pages, and then you can get a lot of uh, out of it. So if you are a Chinese, uh, you are, um, uh, um, comprehend Chinese completely, and then you are also a detail-oriented person, then you can understand quite a bit where each style of the painting, the history coming from, even with the complete Chinese uh, writing, it still doesn't tell you very clearly how it's being done in words. But then the diagram does uh, help you a lot because they have illustration of brushes and how, which brush to use and then the stroke sequence of the brush. And so uh, I, to me it's um, easier just to read the uh, illustration than actually try to focus on the word. This is me, my personal opinion. So moving on, we have uh, on page 63 here, we have this uh, sequential element of uh, more complex grouping of mountains. So this is uh, one of the, um, maybe the second time that we've seen something like this where we build something up from the simple line drawing and then we see the stages where we fill it in and then add the shading um, and, uh, and then fill in with the color. So really nice um, effect here. And there are multiple artists being featured in here. So you do see stylistic differences in this book. It's not just um, focused on a single person's work. Um, so once again, we have this idea of a photo um, set aside with a possible inspired painting. Um, now we're incorporating um, some amber colors here uh, in these. Uh, as far as like uh, darker backgrounds, sort of maybe tea stained kind of um, colors. And we have like a tea colored mulberry paper that, you know, these things, these paintings kind of remind me of. And uh, the mulberry, that tea colored mulberry paper is semi sized, so it was really, it would be a good uh, landscape paper. So again, we have a lot of different uh, pictures of paintings here, um, side by side. Um, we see the artist here pictured um, building up uh, this, um, this scenery that's kind of based on, loosely on this photograph here where we have like some uh, mountains in the background with a very strong sort of foreground element of trees. So shows the step by step the way he builds the trees and then starts to suggest um, the mountains in the background. Just to add a little bit um, on the landscape uh, painting, this book is, most artists is from Taiwan. And then if you, you have are not familiar with a paper called Jinghe. That name of the paper is exclusively from Taiwan of this particular landscape artist, this group of them. So it's long fiber, mulberry paper with some sizing. So again, if you ever heard about Jinghe, so mostly are used by the Taiwan artists that from China, that name does not exist. So continuing on, we have this uh, quite 
actually involved sequential diagram of, of pretty much a complete painting. So um, uh, in, done in sort of 14 different stages, you can see. Uh, and he builds the painting uh, all the way up from these very simple uh, tree elements in the foreground and then uh, fills them in and does the mountains in the background. Um, and so you can see uh, these, uh, this painting sort of come to life in these different stages. Uh, and then a larger picture of the finished composition here. So that is a really nice uh, little section because you do see the sort of finished painting in large form and then you see these various stages uh, that do give you an idea of how the artist was uh, able to build the final composition. So transitioning into uh, another um, artist and again, another style. So we have this very interesting um, idea of this uh, figure here standing amidst these um, large trees. So you can see how this painting was built in five different stages and then you see the final one here. And then changing to another artist, we have this um, idea of um, these the structure hidden amongst the trees. And this idea of like wind, definitely movement involved here um, in this sequence. And then we have the enlarged shot of the full painting here. We get into this next section here that is focused on clouds and mist. So you can see here a focus on different types of renderings of clouds and mist. Uh, and this really um, great compositional idea where you see this very dramatic uh, rock structure on the left here and then contrasted with the empty space and the suggestions of, of a sea of clouds. And then you can see kind of the original inspiration photo up here. And then this is the official buildup of that sequentially in four different stages. And then a large version of the finished painting. So these are very useful pieces. Again, they're not step-by-step -step instruction, but once you, like if you've gone through Landscape Lessons, book one by Ning Ye, you should have a tool set for, um, um, you know, our hope, our aim at Oriental Art Supply is really to um, build inside of you a set of uh, skills that unlock the potential of all of these other learning tools that we have. So um, if you are wanting to get to that stage, feel free to sort of reach out to us because we want you to be at that stage where you're feeling like a resource like this is inspiring and useful to you. Um, and you can, um, um, you're able to, through your experience and um, um, your, your learning in other more detailed instructional material, you, you're able to kind of fill in the gaps between um, lessons like this that are a little bit more like, taking bigger jumps, not showing you exactly how to do each individual stroke. This section here is on waterfalls. So you can see different ideas of waterfalls. And, and I love that they've, they've really chosen some very fantastic paintings to, 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 um, to focus the 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 step by step instruction on. So this is a gorgeous um, sort of closer up shot of uh, this cascading waterfall, and um, you know would be very worthwhile um, to have just this this piece if you could you know take that. Another stage here, again, of this sort of like multi-stage waterfall where you have this one in the background that empties into a pool, 
really nice idea for a painting and showing you the photo that a photo that could possibly have inspired it here. Now this idea of uh, sort of water turbulence as an element, you know, like uh, water against rocks or against the, showing moving water, basically. So here a buildup of like very typical sort of coastline kind of scene where you see these rocks that are coming up and then you see the movement of the ocean against the rocks. I like this because it's quite simple. Um, but, and there's a lot of freedom, you know, for you to express this water. Um, so very accessible composition and it does show you a six stage breakdown. Eight stage breakdown. Here's another um, more sort of um, detailed kind of sketch style shown in five stages. Actually, here's all seven, including the final full color version here. Now we get into a section on figures in landscapes. So very classic idea of scholars communing in nature uh, shown in these different stages here. Eight, eight stages total, including the finished one here. And then this idea of like structures, highlighting structures amidst the landscapes. This is really nice because it's sort of like this very detailed piece here that he actually uses a straight edge. You can see that he's not shy about saying that he uses a straight edge to get these lines so straight. Um, but then he leaves a lot of the rest of the space to the imagination. Um, so he just sort of fills in this kind of window view of, of this structure scenery. Nice idea for a painting. And more ideas of structures. So this sort of like, a, you know, more kind of a in town scenery idea where they're showing like a marketplace and uh, like here we have like a food stand, people gathering around like a street food vendor. It's a very common um, ritual in Asia. So it's nice to see it depicted here. Um, this is like more of a modern scene. Then uh, this whole section is on snow. So we can see this build up here, how he creates this idea of these ink elements in the foreground and then builds up the details of the trees and then leaves a lot of this area blank to suggest the snow. Just adding little suggestions of light ink to break up the white space and to really give you the idea that um, what you're looking at is snow and not just places that are empty. Mm. 
This is a fairly detailed, you know, two times through, they sort of show how the artist is building this very strong, branchy, um, leafless tree element in the foreground with a little structure in the background and then this the suggestion of the snow. With the finished painting here and then the idea of an uh, inspired photograph right here. So this section We have this classic uh, scenery here. It's kind of like, uh, this was featured in a recent email of ours. These really like tall, almost like gorges, you know, like before they dammed up the three gorges, this is sort of reminiscent of some of the scenery that you would see here. We have this like scholar sitting under a tree contemplating. And then we have again a group of people on the this mountain side here built up in these different stages. Yet another painting here. So we have a lot of these sort of uh, different landscape paintings that are shown in like sequential buildups. So you know, uh, a very useful instructional book for the right, um, for the right students. This is another buildup of this sort of like, um, I would call this like a fine line style landscape painting. This is the first buildup of a painting that I've seen in this kind of style, which is this sort of fine line with kind of a softer, more pastel-like color palette that almost makes it sort of more modern feeling or um, kind of like akin to the style that's been adopted by Japanese, certain Japanese animations. So this is a, a more unique painting amongst the ones that featured here. Very detail oriented and very soft looking. Another one that employs this very similar kind of color palette. Then here's a section where we see some very striking uses of this mineral blue. Very, again, strong uses of mineral blue here. Uh, this is an example where we're gonna see some very dramatic, high contrast ink work. And you see him sort of build up. It's almost like this kind of very free, abstract ink uh, that he adds details to, to hint and uh, suggest something more structured. But it really all started with this big, very spontaneous, um, uh, almost like splatter of ink. And then you see the finished piece here, full color with that strong use of the mineral blue. This 
It's the buildup of another landscape painting that includes uh, sort of a scholar figure sitting on the edge of a, 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 a sitting on a rock, accompanied by a horse. Gorgeous depiction, and they do build this up from in from all the different stages. And I really like how compositionally effective this is. You know, this is like not a lot. There's a lot of blank space here, but it's just planned and balanced in such a way that this element is, is so clearly highlighted and set up against this uh, white space. Really wonderful painting. And it's uh, so great that they chose to feature this in, in a way that you could see how the artist built it up sequentially. Then we have another scene of a group of people in a boat. And that is pretty much it. So this is Landscape Painting in Color by Chin Chin Yu. And uh, you can purchase this book on our website at orientalartsupply.com. And if you enjoyed uh, this book review and want to see more content like this, go ahead and give us a... Uh, go ahead and, and subscribe and, and hit that bell notification and give us a thumbs up. And we appreciate you uh, watching this review and we wish you happy painting. Mm -hmm.